So this is the circuit that handles the switching on the mechanical GIF that I've been making out of these aircraft indicator switches. It's based on three of these relays here. Relays have a coil of wire and when you pass a current through that coil it attracts this armature at the top which through a lever moves the switch contacts. And this particular relay is a non-latching double throw type. So that means it's got three switch terminals which you can see coming out on the three pins here and when there's no current going into the coil the middle terminal is resting against the left side terminal in its normally closed position and when you've put a current through the coil it switches across moves across and touches the right side terminal which comes out through this pin and that's its normally open position the double throw switch is electrically identical to this toggle switch here except that it's not actuated by you with your hands it's actuated by passing a current through the coil and this type of relay has a double pole which means it's got effectively two of these double throw switches inside it and you can see there's three pins on this side three pins on this side and that's for the two poles two sets of contacts and you can see that all on our schematic diagram here there's one two three relays and here's the switch contacts coming out on either side of it and this little box here with a diagonal line across it signifies the coil they're drawn in their resting state and the contact is connected to the normally closed position the circuit works because the relays are actually quite slow at switching which in this case is a good thing and what's been left out of the diagram here are the capacitors that affect the timing of the switching these are put across either side of the coil and the bigger the capacitor the slower the relay is to turn on when you put power to it and by switching in different capacitors that's how we're getting different speeds for the display switching. You would have also noticed these diodes here, which are across the relays. They're just to protect against something called back EMF. Uh, but you can go away and Google that if you like. It doesn't matter for this video. So the idea of this circuit is that it's self-sustaining, goes around in a loop. And what we want it to achieve is to switch between the three different positions of this indicator. The indicator rests in its middle position. And if you put power to pin one, it will flip to the left hand side. And if you put power to pin two, it will flip to the right hand side. There's a spring inside the display. So if you remove the power, it will just spring back to its middle resting position. So let's just imagine that you've only just turned the power on and all of the relays are in their normally closed position as they're drawn here. Pins one and two of our indicator are connected here, one and two. And there's a double throw switch here which can either connect this side or this side to the middle pin. This middle pin, if you follow the wire going all the way around, is connected to this switch terminal. 24 volts connected to the middle pin is not going anywhere. So to begin with, our display is just in its middle resting position. Now, let's have a look at how the power is being switched to the coils. You've got 24 volts coming in here. It's connected through here, going through this switch here, back out, and eventually into the coil of this relay. Now, because of that capacitor that we've got connected across the coil, it's going to take a little while to turn on. But once it does, it's going to cause these middle terminals to switch over and contact the normally open terminals. And as far as the indicator is concerned, nothing has changed because power is still not being connected through the switch here to pin 2. But if we now look at this top pole of the relay, the power has been switched over and is now connected to the coil of this second relay. And after a short delay, that's going to cause this relay to turn on, which will make these contacts switch over. So that now means that the 24 volts here is being connected through this wire and into pin 2 of our indicator, and that's going to cause it to flip over. On the other side of the relay, notice that power coming through here is actually now disconnected from the coil of the first relay. And so obviously after a bit of a delay due to our capacitor, it's gonna turn off, which will switch this contact 
back to pin 1. Now remember that even though we've now switched this 24 volts so it's not connected to the coil of the second relay anymore, that second relay is going to take a little bit of time to turn off due to its inherent slowness and the capacitor that we've put across it. So this second relay is still going to be on for a little bit of time while this first one is off. That means that the 24 volts has a chance to be connected to pin 1 and our indicator is going to flip the other way. You will have also figured out that since this contact has switched over, power is now being connected into the coil of the third relay and that is going to turn it on. But we'll get back to the effects of that in a second. Eventually though the second relay is going to turn off and that means that the power is going to be disconnected from pin 1 and the display will spring back to its middle resting position. So at this point the first two relays are now off, the state in which they started. And the only reason why that whole switching sequence hasn't started up again is because earlier we turned on this third relay and it's still taken a little bit of time to turn off even though the power has now been disconnected from its coil. And because it's switched over the 24 volts is not going through this wire here and into the coil of pin 1 and starting the sequence again. So we're using this third relay as a little delay circuit so that there's enough time for the indicator to rest in its middle position. And really importantly gives us a clip clop horse sound which is an important second aim for this circuit. It's not only switching the display it's also acting as an audio sound effect. And you can hear the difference if I take that third relay out of the circuit. This doesn't sound right. That sounds much more like a horse. Of course though, this relay has actually now switched power off to itself. And in addition, this relay has switched back over. So there's no power going to its coil. It will eventually turn itself off and the whole process will begin again. Well, I hope you enjoyed that explanation and there's a more detailed version of this schematic on my Patreon with all the capacitor switching and stuff on it, as well as multiple build vlogs where I'm talking in detail about how I came up with all these ideas and the process of making all the displays. And I hope you can join me over there. It would really help with uh, buying some time to do more of this stuff.